The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. It's our first podcast of 2023. Today, yeah, we finally Jim, got around to doing one. Yeah. Yes, we did. It's been very busy in a good yeah. way. Today, Jim argues that the market is not worried about the debt ceiling right now, but check back in May. So, Jim, to start us off today, why do we have a debt ceiling? So, yeah, that's important to understand because people kind of get confused about this. It goes back to the Constitution with the separations of power. The Treasury Secretary and the Treasury Department is part of the executive branch with the President of the United States. The Congress basically authorizes spending, and then the president uh, oversees the or conducts that spending with the Treasury Department. So all spending that is done by the Treasury or the executive branch needs to have oversight by Congress. Now, the way we did it before World War I was every time the government the wanted the federal government wanted to issue a new treasury security it was actually that individual security was a bill in congress that had to be uh, had to get a majority of the house and the senate to vote for and the president to sign off on the reason they did that was we didn't have that many bonds that we issued you know one or few a month maybe one a month maybe not even one a month at that point fast forward to world war 1 when we ramped up the spending to, to conduct World War I, we started issuing Liberty Bonds. Those bonds were coming at several a week, kind of like we do now. That was too many to have each one of those be an individual uh, bill in Congress to get voted on. Congress doesn't move that fast. So they switched it to a debt ceiling that Congress authorizes the executive branch to, to borrow up to so much money and then needs to go back per the constitution to get permission to increase that debt ceiling. So from World War I to the 1980s, the debt ceiling was not only never a problem, but in the few instances when we kind of breached it, everybody, you know, Congress does this a lot, everybody kind of looked the other way for a couple of days or a week, and the guy hadn't issued the bonds. We'll get around to the end of the week or next week to raising the debt ceiling. Famously, that happened in the 1980s when we hit the debt ceiling and it was the night of the White House Correspondents' Dinner and Tip O'Neill didn't want to pass the bill that night. So he told the Treasury, go ahead and issue your bonds. We'll pass it the next day. And it took him a week to pass it or something like that. Then in the 1990s, President Clinton jumped on this idea that if the Republican Congress did not uh, pass spending as the Democrat Clinton wanted, he would use the, the debt ceiling, which was also coming at the same time, as a nuclear option, as they refer to it, to shut down the government and create all kind of havoc and blame it on the Republicans. And it worked in 1994 to a charm because what happened was, the Republicans wanted to cut spending. The Democrat didn't. The debt ceiling was happening at the same time. They couldn't agree. They had a shutdown of the government. And then for those that are old enough to remember, they, they famously closed the Washington Monument. And they had the door padlocked shut. And then they literally on the nightly news, remember this is pre-internet, so the nightly news drove everything. Imagine this visual. The doors padlock shut, this big yellow school bus shows up and like 60 Boy Scouts that are about 10 or 12 years old get off the bus. They wanted to walk to the top of the Washington Monument and they couldn't because it was padlocked and they're on TV in tears that they raised all this money selling chocolate bars to get on this bus to drive 14 hours to Washington and the Washington Monument's closed. 
Oh, my God. This was the biggest crisis since Pearl Harbor in Washington. And they had to basically the white the Republicans completely caved and they raised the debt ceiling. And ever since that day, the debt ceiling has been this nuclear thing that we've had. It's kind of silly, but it's it it matters because you can't go without one because the Congress is supposed to run a check over the executive branch. They cannot not have a check over the executive branch. So when people ask, why do we have it? We need to have it. And yes, is it kind of dumb and we you know, make Boy Scouts cry and all this other stuff because of it? Yeah, it's, it's idiotic. But whoever said that our politics was rational and sophisticated, it, it rarely ever is. So Jim, where do we stand now? So if we go to the first chart, it shows, the blue line shows the debt ceiling. The last time it was raised was December of 2021. It was raised to $31.38 trillion. We hit that level, $31.38 trillion, on January 19th. So that was the day. So last Thursday, we hit the debt ceiling. Now, the, now all that means is that the administration cannot borrow more in the public markets than $38.38 trillion. The administration has a series of what they call extraordinary means that they can do. They can borrow against government employee pension plans. That doesn't qualify under the debt ceiling. They can run down the Treasury general account, which is like the Treasury's checking account. There's about $200 billion in it. And a lot of this that they do is somewhat made up by the Treasury. You know, they have to make up some assumptions. And Janet Yellen came out and said that they could do these extraordinary means and basically punt this date to June 5th. So June 5th is the date. Now, that date can vary by a couple of weeks, either side. You know, they could be late May, it could be mid-June, but it can't vary like to 2029 or something like that. They can only vary it by a couple of days or a couple of weeks either side because they could change some of the assumptions or maybe some of the cash flows will be a little bit different. And by the way, I might add that um, yeah, they can borrow against government employee pension plans. If a private corporation was to get in trouble and say, well, what are we going to do? We're running out of money. Oh, we got this pension plan for all these employees. We'll just take their money and spend it. Everybody goes to jail. But when it's the government, you know, it's extraordinary means. Nobody goes to jail. But that's the difference between the government um, and the private sector. So what happens in June? So one last thing um, before we get to the next chart. In 2011, or well, let me say what happens when you get to that June 5th date. If the government cannot borrow, you'll have a treasury bill due that day, June 5th. It can't be paid because in order to pay the principal on that $20 billion of treasury bills, you have to issue another $20 billion treasury bill to pay off the other one. Now, this is the way that the government's always worked for decades and decades, so that's nothing new. So if you cannot pay that June 5th Treasury bill, the SEC ruled in 2011 that you have to value that security at zero. Now, if you get your money on June 6th or June 7th, you could go back and value it again at par. So if we jump to the next uh, chart, the next chart shows you the Treasury bill yield curve in August, um, in October of 21, uh, 2021 in orange and, and December 2nd of uh, 2021 in blue. Now, originally that end of extraordinary means date was in, in early October. And you'll see what they refer to as a kink in the yield curve. You see that the yield curve, the orange line went up to that early uh, or that late, uh, it's uh, actually late October day, and then it came back down. That's because if you are a money market fund and you own a treasury bill or cash management note, and it matures on October 21st, and that's the date that it drops dead, uh, I'm sorry, that's the date that you know that you cannot refinance it. And let's say you own 2% of your money market fund in that bill, and you don't get paid, you have to value it at zero. 
your NAV the next day for your money market fund is 98 cents. You break the buck, and that's the third level of hell for financial markets. We found that out in 2008. So everybody avoids those securities around that drop dead date, um, you know, which was late October. They then did pass a, a temporary debt ceiling bill to push it to early, early December. That's the blue line. Then we had another kink in early December. Everybody was avoiding it then because they were worried that we would get to that date, we would have the technical default, and then they passed the they passed the debt ceiling bill, which I showed you on the previous chart, which we hit on January 19th of this year. So the Treasury bill curve is your indication that there is a concern in the market. So if we go to the next chart. The red line on this chart shows you the Treasury bill curve as of June 19, January 19th, excuse me, and blue is today, January 24th, the day we're recording. The vertical orange, uh, the vertical gray line, I can't get my colors right today. The vertical gray line on this chart shows you June 5th. There is no kink in the curve around June 5th. The marketplace is not worried that there is going to be a debt ceiling uh, problem around June 5th. There is no concern in the market, despite all the histrionics you hear from Washington types that there will. Now, you could look at this curve, you go, yes, but it peaks in August, and then it seems to back off. There's not as many Treasury bills that are issued between August and December. So if you go to the final chart, what that curve looks like is it looks like the forward Fed Fund Futures curve. It peaks in July, and it starts back down. So in other words, the, the rest of the Treasury bill curves looks like what we expect for Fed policy. It doesn't look like there's any concern with the, uh, with, uh, the, the debt ceiling. Now, that's where we are now. And I suspect we're going to stay there for several weeks or a couple of months, maybe by May. If, there's, if this is not in, if resolved, you might see a kink develop in the Treasury bill curve, and that would be a market signal that there is some worry, which there is not now. Um, but wait a minute. What about all this idea that there are Republicans that are saying that there's no way that they would ever vote for a debt ceiling? I'll take them at the word and that they're sincere on January 24th. I have seen no reason that I would vote to increase the debt ceiling. And by May 24th, circumstances will change. In five months, things will happen. And they could be sincere then. Well, things are different in May than they were in January. And now I could vote for it. And really what I think that difference is, is the way that it is being portrayed politically is if there is a debt ceiling problem, it's all on the Republicans. They get all of the problems. They get all of the blame. And if a bunch of Boy Scouts can't go to the top of the Washington Monument, it's the Republicans' fault. But if in the next five months, the Republicans can kind of somehow spin this as it's the Democrat Senate and Joe Biden's fault or partially their fault, and I don't know how, but they can try, then there's a possibility that we could see that date come and we could see a debt ceiling breach because then it's not all on them. They can blame Joe Biden for why the Boy Scouts can't walk to the top of the Washington Monument. But right now, that's not the case. And like I said, I don't personally see how they could do it, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a path to spinning this as it's the Democrats' fault if there is a debt ceiling breach. But if it remains a partisan thing, I think at the end of the day, the Republicans only damage themselves and so, yes, they can be intransigent and they could say about, I will never vote for it in January. And then they could equally say, well, that was January and I meant it. And now it's May and things have changed. And since things have changed, now I can vote for it. And that's where I think the market is. And that's why I think despite all the histrionics about the debt ceiling, there's nothing there now. Check back in May. Thank you for your thoughts today, Jim. Thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks everyone and have a great day.